Michael Wilson, and I'm a research engineer at the Center for Applied Energy Research, working on an uh, algae project. We've got an overall process concept where the state of Kentucky challenged us to evaluate the technological and economic feasibility of using algae as a biomitigator of carbon dioxide. The process concept is a coal-fired power plant producing a CO2-rich gas added with some growth media to an algae cultivation area. Algae, using the sunlight, CO2 present, and the nutrients present, produce perform photosynthesis, and a CO2 lean gas is emitted from the reactor. Once the reactor reaches a certain density, in order to keep optimal growth conditions, some algae needs to be removed, it's dewatered and dried, and then fractioned into either proteins, carbohydrates, or the lipids that everyone is excited about for the emerging biofuels market. We have a couple of feedback loops in order to recover as much of our nutrients and water as possible um, to try and make the system as efficient as possible. So here you've got some typical suspects uh, to be found in a photobioreactor. We have a skinodesmus and a chlorella vulgaris, which is typically used in a wastewater treatment. We are currently working with skinodesmus. Here is a commercial photobioreactor. We've got photosynthetic tubes to allow access to the sun. You can see the bees moving back and forth that help keep the walls clean and help allow maximum sunlight penetration. Over here is the main central reservoir to provide algae time in the dark as well as a uh, appropriate volume to have a good pump operation. It's brought down to this pump and circulated through. Here you can see pH measurement, uh, which gives you a good indication. CO2 entering the solution forms carbonic acid, which will lower the pH. As the algae eats the carbonic acid, pH will rise, and you can control it and keep the, CO, the solution saturated with carbon dioxide so that it is not carbon limited during its growth cycle. Here is where the CO2 is being introduced. Right now in this lab scale, we're just using uh, lab-grade carbon dioxide. And here is where we add nutrients. Uh, we add a little bit of nutrients once a day to try and operate it like a continuous process, as opposed to throwing in nutrients, allowing it to grow, and then harvesting. We'd like it to grow continuously. Now we're going to go over to uh, a little bit in the greenhouse and show you some diagnostic controls we have. Uh, you measure dissolved CO2, atmospheric CO2, pH, and dissolved oxygen, which can be used as a uh, sign of photosynthetic activity. To talk a little bit more about the harvest process, we're using a sedimentation flocculation. And as you can see here, you've got harvested biomass in the bottom and a clarified liquid up top. This initial dewatering is uh, dewaters the solution 90%, and therefore you get 90% of your biomass. Thank you. All right, and then just in the background, a quick word. Uh, this is what the Center for Applied Energy Research is currently focusing on, uh, large-scale, low-cost, photoviral reactor development. Um, thank you, and uh, contact me if you have any questions.